What's going on everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. Today I want to talk about the canceled Pan-African Conference in Ghana. Everybody's pissed off. Everybody's upset and everybody's confused on why you will cut off such an important event at the last moment. Especially when you have the most powerful Pan-Africans in the world in attendance. Right? It's confusing and people don't understand. Especially coming from Ghana who seems to be heading the Pan-African movement at this point. Right? Now, what I've gathered so far is that there are the government of, of, of Ghana, right? The government of Ghana had suspicions on of a particular, uh, organize, uh, a particular um, group of people who were participating in the organization of this conference. And they came to find out that the accounts of these people are not quite up to snuff, meaning they don't quite know who these people are. And 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 so because of that, they didn't want to they didn't want to push the conference because think about it. I mean, the thing about it is these were heavy hitters coming from. I mean, these were heavy hitter Pan Africans coming to speak at this conference, and it would have been a very powerful look to have all these great powerful Pan African leaders in the same place speaking in Ghana. It would have sent a massive message. To the people of Ghana, to the people of Africa, to the diaspora, right? Because believe it or not, Pan-Africanism is the only ideological organization that's physically doing, that's that's actively trying to uplift African people. That under the, under Pan-Africanism, there are several, there are many organizations with different names, but under the guise of Pan-Africanism. See, people don't even know what Pan-Africanism is. They think it's one group. Pan-Africanism is this ideological framework of thinking that many groups fall under, right? So, so what we have here is, but in between that, there are going to be groups that use Pan-Africanism to push their own agendas. Just like we got fake, fake Pan-Africans, we have individual fake Pan-Africans that we all know. Right, we see them. Right, I don't already threw a bunch of rocks at them, who use Pan Africanism to push an agenda. So there's snakes in the grass. So just like we got individual fake Pan Africans, Pan Africans for pay, Pan African, Pan African capitalists. Right, all these these guys are using the vehicle of Pan Africanism to push their own agendas that does not actually benefit black people. There are organizations that's using Pan Africanism to try to get in there. Because the thing is, Pan Africanism cannot be stopped. Pan Africanism is African people standing up finally and taking agency over themselves. It's, you can't be stopped. It's, it's impossible to stop it. So the Europeans know they can't stop it. So what do you do? If you can't fight them, you got to join them. Europeans are trying to find a way to infiltrate Pan Africanism. Most of them would be liberals and progressives. I'm going to be honest. And I'm a progressive. Right, I believe in progressive policies, but progressive policies towards African people, right? Even though I want all humans to, you know, prosper and stuff, but I'm focused on African people, right? There's gonna be liberals and progressives who see the tea leaves, right? They see the writing on the wall. So they're gonna they're gonna try to join and connect and finance institutions that look like Pan-Africans, right? They look like Pan-African organizations, and they will be getting funding from dubious sources, right? so that they can fund their operations within the Pan-African movement. It's something that we cannot avoid. Every movement has always had infiltrators that use the same sentiment to disguise themselves, they camouflage themselves, but once they get into positions or they get their people in positions, that's when they make their moves, right, to do whatever it is that their actual plan is to do. So I guess Ghana knew that by canceling this, it was gonna be a bad look. But, but, would you rather have a canceled event that can always be rescheduled, right, at a later date. Or would you rather have an event that was going to use the most powerful Pan-Africans, right? That would maybe, possibly, unbeknownst to them, will have elevated a person that's not a Pan-African, that's a snake in the grass, that would have been elevated just because of the association with those powerful Pan-Africans and would have been put in position to do and dis disenfranchise Pan-Africanism or to push a, a different agenda. Because the conservative Africans have always been against Pan-Africanism. If you look at history, the conservative Africans want to maintain the status quo of the African countries. Because conservative Africans throughout history, and this is not my opinion, this is actual historical fact that can be looked up for, 
by anybody who actually bothered to actually look instead of just guessing conservative Africans have always wanted to maintain the status quo of Africa because the status quo lines their individual pockets you understand because what pan-Africanism is gonna do is gonna fundamentally change the way we are as a society this is not just a feel-good movement pan-Africanism is a in Africa it's a political movement right It's an ideological movement but it's turning into a political movement right like the EFF is basically a pan-African political party. The EFF is a pan-African political party. And if you ain't been paying attention, South Africa is one of the is the is, is an African country that's actively fighting against one of the most heinous groups of Europeans on the planet. And so South Africa has the balls, all right? Despite the political differences between the, the, the different parties that's fighting there in-house in South Africa, they, as a group, as a country, as a group of people, Africans are finally stepping up on the, on the world stage and saying, you know what, Israel, you're committing genocide. And we're going to take this to court. When have you seen an African country ever stand up to white countries? Lately, you've been seeing African countries and their leaders grow big, huge titanium balls, right? And now they're starting to say, you know what, you Europeans, uh-uh, not today. No, we're going to hold you accountable. The same way Europeans will look at any African you know, country, like if they was mommy and daddy and, and, and point down on us and try to judge us, say, you're committing genocide, and they take our leaders and send them to some far-off place in Europe to put them in jail. To, they have a whole court in Europe where they persecute or they judge African leaders for what they do, right? While they, the European countries, commit 10 times worse genocide and criminality across the world, and they don't hold themselves accountable. Because white people believe that white is right and everybody else is secondary. So we got a, finally got African countries that's stepping up and realizing they actually are the big dogs in the room. That they're actually the great mighty elephant on the, on the savannah. That they're the big dog, they're the big lions, right, on the, in the savannah, right? Like I said, when a giant wakes up, that's it. Africa's waking up. So since Africa's waking up and now we're starting to develop political leaders, right? Like we had back in the 60s. Like we had back in the, in, in, in the 50s, right? We're starting to develop political leaders that's, that has enough clout, enough power, enough charisma to galvanize the African people. Capitalistic countries, European countries, and Arab countries are definitely afraid of Pan-Africanism because Pan-Africanism is taking hold in a, in a way that can't be stopped. Africans have the numbers, we got the resources, we got the power, our military capability is getting to the point where ain't nobody really gonna be able to F with us besides America. But I'm just gonna keep it real. We're getting to the point where ain't nobody really gonna be able to F with us besides America, right? Because, you know, the European countries, they, they too weak, right? Even though they got some good tech, tech, they still too weak. They ain't got it, right? So outside of a, a, a global nuclear strike on all of Africa, they not, they not effing with us for real, for real. Them days is over, right? They had that moment. Our moment is coming. So what you see is every political faction, every political faction that's gonna be that's gonna be affected by the rise of Pan-Africanism, they're making it their goal and their mission to disrupt, slow down, distort, or stop Pan-Africanism. Why do you think all of a sudden we got all these African Americans that want to disassociate from the word African and now they want to call themselves Black American or FBA? or ADOS or pretenders, all of a sudden there's a fever pitch of a group, a segment of African Americans that's actively campaigning to decouple themselves from Africa, all of a sudden. You're talking about African people, the ones who gatekeep African culture, the ones who know more about African culture than even most of the African people, because, you know, we have access to the information, now they have it, but we had it sooner, so we have it. Plus. They stole us along with all the shit that they stole, so we've been with our African shit over here, right? <laughs> okay, they took us and our shit, right? So, so all of a sudden you see all these little these little groups, and this is how it happens, right? What happens is the West will will go into a country and they will find an opposition and they will fund that opposition, right? They will fund that opposition. They will they will give them everything they need to go against the government or go against a power that they perceive as a threat, right? Because Pan-Africanism is a threat to capitalism. Pan-Africanism is a threat to European power. Pan-Africanism is a threat to Arab power. Because first of all, the Arabs, 
they, they, they have Arab, pan, they have pan Arabism, right? But they don't have the numbers. They don't got the resources. I mean, other than a few countries that got oil, they ain't got none. So pan Africanism will be like, you guess what? Af North Africa will become black again. Trust and believe. Pan Africanism is gonna make North Africa become black. Pan Africanism is gonna make those Northern Africans that deny their African heritage all of a sudden want clamor and 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 advocate for their identity as Africans to be accepted. Pan Africanism, once it takes hold, is gonna make the whole diaspora be proud to be African. They're not gonna have. They're not gonna self-loathe themselves. They're not gonna. They're not gonna belittle themselves like they they do. They're not gonna worship whiteness. They're not gonna worship none of that shit. Pan Africanism is gonna create billions and billions of proud, empowered, franchised Africans, and that is very dangerous for Arabs and Europeans. It's not dangerous for Asians because they don't have any opposition to us. Asians are cool. They're like, hey. You know what I'm saying? We can work with them. They can work with us. Be Pan-African. We Asian. Blasian. They, they don't care. They cool with it. So they don't really have, you know, matter of fact, Pan-Africanism actually benefits Asia. It does. It really does, right? But it doesn't benefit the Arabs because we ain't never forgot. We still got to deal with them Arabs, right? To a certain extent. Certain Arabs. Because right now you see us supporting the Palestinians, right? There are afro Palestinians. I keep telling you, there's Afro-Palestinians there too, so... You know, we are somewhat involved in the situation, right? But, you know, certain Arabs are going to start recognizing they ain't nothing but a bunch of mulattoes. Those Arabs, they're going to be a bunch of Gaddafis, all right? Arabs who say they black. Because they know that they do, they do their DNA, it's going to say, most of their shit going to say they African. They mixed. Arabs ain't nothing but mixed. And the real Arabs are black, all right? I seen them myself with my own eyes. You know, them do do dark, right? So, yeah, I would not be... Yeah, it's disappointing that this conference didn't happen. But guess what? Another one's gonna happen. Because the great thing about Pan-Africanism is it re it's relentless. It's relentless. All those powerful leaders, they're gonna get together. They're gonna get together. It's gonna they're gonna do it again. I wouldn't doubt that Ghana, that Ghana, um, you know, the government of Ghana, you know, they're, they're probably gonna plan another one, right? And it's gonna be proper. And and hopefully the people that's participating are real Pan-African organizations. And that it can go all, go on without a hitch. Keep in mind, if you want to know if Pan African is, is working, look at all the heat it's getting. All these videos, Pan Africanism is dead. That's wishful thinking from xenophobic people. Pan Africanism is dead. The only way reason you would say Pan African is dead is if you're looking at it and it's alive. The only way you would make a video talking shit about Pan Africanism is if you're afraid of Pan Africanism. Or if there's something about Pan Africanism. Pan-Africanism that triggers you. I seen this one black dude, dude made a three hour video about Pan-Africanism. He was mad, he had all this, and, uh, I'm like, dude, ain't nobody even tripping. Pan-Africanism doesn't care about the black folks that don't wanna participate. That's the thing about it. If you're not a Pan-African, that's okay. Go sit in the stands and be quiet. Go mind your own business. Cause Pan-Africans, we recognize what unity looks like. We recognize, we recognize what, how powerful unity is, right? We recognize once Pan-Africanism wins, that's the final game. That's the end of the war. We uh, we would have effectively won because the next time African people, the next time we win, that's it. That's the end of the game. No, there will be no time in history, and well, in the future, once Pan-Africanism, Africans unite, no group will ever be able to disenfranchise us ever again for the remainder of the existence of the human race. This is the last battle that we're fighting right now. And Pan-Africanism is the vehicle in which that's gonna happen, right? It just requires us to wake up. It requires us to liberate our minds because we are all in positions to take control. We're just mentally not there. And that's what Pan-Africanism is doing, is telling people, hey, hey, we understand you've been going through this and that, but you know, all we gotta do is make a, wake up and make one decision. All of us collectively, we need to wake up and decide that we're not going to take it anymore. And that's all it's going to take. And then we well, we take the action to make sure that happens. We have the intelligence. We have the power. We have the resources. Pan-Africanism is creating new countries in Africa right now. Pan-Africanism is, is, is um, taking back the resources from Europe. Now you see all these African Francophone countries, right, who are very Pan-African right now. You see all these Francophone countries, they are taking their, they're keeping their, their raw material. They're not allowing Europeans to exploit Africa like they used to. Now this takes a while because 
each country has their own governments, right? And in each government, you have your own actors and you have your own traitors. You have your own people who actually don't care about their country. So that means the real Pan-Africans and, and, and pro-black African people have to fight against the other forces that's within their government that also has the ability to legislate their agenda, right? So it's very complicated, very time consuming, very energy intensive work, right? It is, right? But Pan-Africanism is slowly but surely rising despite all the pressure on his back. And this is just another example of it happening. And I have to say, maybe possibly this might have been a, this this cancellation of this, even though people are upset about it, right? If you if you if you saw the passion of those Ghanaians when they was upset that the Pan African Conference was was uh, was canceled, if you saw it, if you saw that passion, it would shock you because you got African Americans who don't believe that there's any Pan Africans in Africa, that Africans are not hip to Pan Africanism, that African people don't care about Pan Africanism. You got Africans that believe that. Let you see a video of a bunch of angry Ghanaians mad because they couldn't go to a to a place to see these these uh these continental Africans talk about liberation and give them the plan, the game plan. Right? So that's why us Pan Africans, don't be deterred. Don't be deterred. Understand things like this gonna happen. Things like this is always gonna happen. But it lets you know that we're being taken seriously. Because if 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 Pan Africanism wasn't dangerous, if it wasn't an existential threat to white superiority, Arab superiority, then this conference would have went on without a hitch. No problem. Would have been no problem, okay? So I want you guys to, you know, calm down, relax. It's going to be all right, all right? But yeah, that's my thoughts on the Pan-African Conference. There'll be another one. And them Pan-African leaders, they're going to be speaking. They're going to be You can't stop them from talking. We got the internet now. So whatever they was going, whatever speech they was going to say, I'm pretty sure they're going to say it on on their own platform anyway anyway that's all i gotta say about this, this is afro think tank learn some teach them i'm out